last video, we talked about asking questions and how that has to be the first step of any good scientific method because if you don't have a problem, you don't have a place to start. And asking questions sets the foundation of your study. It sets that problem statement where you find your variables and then you can start working with that as you start developing your study, your scientific research. But asking a question is the basic of science. It's about inquiry. It's about trying to understand the world. And so you ask questions. But how do you start go about trying to, to answer this question? Well, as any teacher knows, and you being a student, you should have grasped this by now, you can't really answer questions that you don't understand. Sometimes you feel like you studied a lot. Sometimes you feel like you're ready for that test. And then a test comes, and you read a question, and you're like, what is he actually asking? It's not that I didn't study. I know the stuff. I just don't get what he's asking. If you're ever in a position in class, make sure you ask me. Because in the day of the final test, you're not going to be able to do it. So when you don't understand a question, learn about it. And that's exactly the second step of the scientific method. In a way, people call this the beginning because you can't really find a problem unless you, you, you observe things. But, of course, you, asking a question will cause you to focus on something and then observe things about that something. So, basically, you start with asking a question and then you move on to trying to understand this question by learning as much as you can about it. All right, so that comes the idea of observation. Observation is the process by which you try to do research to understand the question. You can't answer a question you don't understand. I usually ask my students uh, in class as well, and I play around, and I always ask them a difficult question, something that they probably wouldn't know at the level that they are at. Once in a while, I get some smart one that actually knows the answer, but usually I'll say, I'll give an instant A to anyone who can answer this question, and then I'll ask the question, and then it will be full of words that they had never heard of before. How can they possibly answer that? That is a good illustration. If you've never even seen the words which are in the question, how could you answer it? So a good scientist tries to do observation to understand the phenomena that he's trying to uh, predict, trying to control, before he can actually answer it. So that this, this ties in on your lab report, which we're talking about as we talk about the scientific method, with the background section. So Scientists collect data, all right? So this is a little piece of the matrix here. Data is basically information collected from observations. So all the information you collect is called data. And this comes from observations. Now, there's two types of data. There's qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative data is like data that describes something. It's usually like words like adjectives and things like that. So they're descriptions about what you're observing. And quantitative data is more like numerical data, data that you can actually measure and do math with. And there's two types of that. There's discrete data, which is like, you know, without decimals, or continuous data, which has all the decimals in between. You know? So let me give you an example here. All right? So you see this classroom here. Uh, and I'll say, oh, look, the chairs in the classroom are all blue. Is that qualitative or quantitative? Well. I used an adjective to describe it. It was blue, and I wasn't really using any numbers, so you should know that that is qualitative data. Oh, there are, in the room, nine chairs. Was that qualitative or quantitative? Well, it's quantitative data because I gave you a number. Oh, there's a calendar in the back of the room. Is that quantitative or qualitative? Qualitative because I'm saying it's in the back of the room. It's a description. But if I say, like, there's a calendar there, with 31 days in it. Now it became quantitative data. And it's interesting though, sometimes you can describe something that was qualitative with quantitative numbers. Remember when I said the chairs were blue? You can change that into a number by saying, in the computer, the number for that color would be something. Because you know how in the computer how the colors have numbers when you're working with Photoshop? So now, now you transform the color into a number that you can use. But it's still going to be discrete because it's not really a number that you can... Uh, work with and manipulate in math. So it's still a little more descriptive. You see what I'm talking about? But that's the difference between qualitative, it's giving a quality to the data, and quantitative data, which is actually measuring with number, giving quantities, and things you can use to do statistics. Now, in science, we try to focus more on quantitative data because you can do math with that and then, pr and then use the math to, 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 to quantify the effect or, of how close to the reality we actually are here. But it's also important to do qualitative data because it helps us understand the phenomenon better as well.